beast. Okay, the teaching your dog not to bark question is a lot more difficult question than it seems. There's a lot more to it. Now, the first step you want to take is not to actually stop them from barking. It sounds like it would be, but it's not. You don't want to start there. You want to start there with your calm assertiveness. You want to start when something comes that he's upset about and he wants to bark about, then you want to be calm about it and just reassure him that, hey, this is nothing, relax. Don't pay any attention to it. Don't feed into it. So if your dog gets up when the mailman comes to the door or something happens, pay it no, no attention. Don't pay it any mind. Just be relaxed and calm about it. Don't make any special actions or movements of going to the window, going to the doors, nothing. Pay it no mind at all. That'll help. That'll be a good start. Then you want to start training to actually be quiet. Now you want to find a trigger for your dog that causes them to bark. Now one of his triggers, he barks, he likes to get in the side by side and he'll bark uh, when he goes on, on a trip. So I know that he's going to bark then. So I put him in the side by side and I gave him the hush command. Now, if he doesn't understand the command, you want to get a little closer, be more assertive, be louder because he's going to need to cut through all that excitement and he's going to need to cut through all those endorphins he's got going on. He's excited. He's, he's got this dump of adrenaline going on because somebody's at the door or something's going on and you're going to need to cut through that. I'm not trying to be mean to him, but I'm trying to cut through and really make him know that I'm, I mean business. I need to talk to him. Hush! 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 Good boy. Good boy. So, when he didn't stop barking anyway, I got closer. Hush! I invaded his space and I let him know that I was there uh, for business. Then, after I did that, he got calm and he got quiet. And that's what I wanted, so I rewarded that with that a boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. And that's what you want to do. You want to reward his compliance. So well, that brings us to the final part that's pretty controversial. <laughs> a lot of the times, that alone is not going to work. Now, you want to maintain that as part of your training. Uh, the calmness, the confidence, uh, the hush, the command, the invade the space, the treats when he does something right. Sometimes that's not going to work. And that's when you need a shock collar, a training collar. Now, the way you're going to use this is you're going to, it has three settings. Let me go get one and I'll show you. Okay. So this is the training collar that I recommend. This is the one that I like. This is the controller, the Multifun. And if you see in the description, I've linked my Amazon to it. And if you buy it, I get a couple pennies. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, I just really did it to make, I wanted to make it easier for you guys to find. So this is the Multifun. One of the reasons I like it, it has a safety switch. And I had seen problems in the past that they had left it laying around and a cat had stepped on a button or two and shocked the dog. I've seen a toddler grab a hold of it and shock a dog. You don't want that. All right, so it's not all about shocking. Matter of fact, the reason you want it is not specifically for the shock. So we have a beep. This button here will make the collar beep. This collar will make the, this button will make the collar vibrate, and this one will make it shock. And you also have you can decide how much you want the shock to, to happen, how much shock you want, and it can control, control up to four collars, which collar you want. So here's how we're going to use this. So when he has the unwanted barking behavior, the first step is we're going to beep. We'll give it a beep. It's not on him right now. He doesn't need it, but we're going to give it a beep. Okay. If he doesn't comply, we're going to give it a vibrate. Okay, that's the next step up in our level. The final step is to actually give him a static shock. Now it has 100 different levels of shock. So you wanna start with the lowest level and work up to the one that just gets the result that you want. Okay, it doesn't have to be some big powerful jolt. Just enough to let them know that, ooh, I don't like that. Okay, then from that point on, they will start to associate the beep, the vibrate, and then the shock and they will know that if they don't do the behavior that you want from them, the shock will be coming and you almost never have to make it to shock. Just a good beep, you say hush and push the beep and that gets it done. So if you can't get it done with the traditional way, the way I was showing you with invading the space and the, the firm command of hush and the, and the positive reinforcement, because you always want to try positive reinforcement tools first, 
then you may have to step up to one of these we don't use this for that we use this only for his safety we use this when we're going out in a public place where he could run in the road where he could do something hazardous to himself or to others and we need him to stop this behavior immediately and that's when we use this because sometimes their adrenaline and their emotions overtake them and they do things you you know that could get them hurt so we need to overcome uh, that for his sake that's why we use it because the hush thing works pretty good for us we live in the country we don't have neighbors that get super annoyed with his barking besides um, we have neighborhood dog barking all night long so yeah no big deal now remember I'm not an expert dog trainer uh, I don't do this for a living um, we got crews and we had to learn as we go and I watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of trial and error with this big beautiful hunk of a Doberman and that's what works for us and I don't want to dismiss an important factor there are times when your dog should bark and there are good times to bark and it's something that his natural energy needs to be released he needs to go places and take him places that he knows it's okay to bark and let him bark because he has this build up in himself and he needs to release that and it's a natural thing and just to live a life that he can never bark it wouldn't be healthy in the same way if you had to live a life where you couldn't talk or you you could never run or you could never express yourself artistically <laughs> you need to have a place where you can now this in the home in the kennel that can be a place that he understands he can't do this but when you when you get to a place that you can a park uh, an outdoor area and make time and make ways to allow your dog to express themselves and to bark 